G'day Guardians, it's Matt here, and in today's video, I'm going to be showing you how to get some pretty fast clears on this week's replayable mission, The Last Chance, on Master Difficulty. There's a couple reasons why you'll want to get in here and farm this, one being that Ascendant Alloy is a common drop, which is crucial for endgame weapon crafting and for getting those sweet, sweet enhanced perks on all of those weapons. Not to mention, you'll need some of these Ascendant Alloys for the Osteo Strigger Catalyst, or for crafting any of the exotic glaives if you haven't done that already. Aside from the alloys, high statted armor is a common drop for this too, so make sure you put your ghost mods on to manipulate where you want your armor to be pointy. I usually opt for recovery or intellect. For those new to weekly missions, master difficulty sits at 1580 light level, but it honestly doesn't feel too difficult. You have the ability to respawn after a short period, so if you make some bad positional plays, it's honestly not the end of the world. The master version of this mission has anti-barrier and unstoppable champions with a few arc and solar shields sprinkled throughout. In terms of loadouts, I took my usual support role with a divinity, a solar tracking rocket launcher, and a pulse rifle. The pulse rifle was just to serve as a backup for unstoppable champions, but honestly, I was just having it on to level it up. It didn't get much use since most rooms and encounters in this mission have something to divinity at all times. I had Heart of Inmost Light on to take advantage of some Void 3.0 abilities, but didn't have anything specific in terms of mods besides some ammo rocket finders, a trace rifle scav and lucent finisher and special ammo finisher on my mark. Rogi and Steve both used Orpheus rig on their hunters to give them that extra arrow shot on their Mobius quivers to help melt any tanky or big enemies. Rogi used Arbalest and was in charge of anti-barriers. He had funnel web whilst taking advantage of the hot loadout at the moment with font of might and volatile rounds and a reed's regret to complement my divinity. Steve rocked Wither Horde to assist with ag control and spawn killing, and an Insidious from the new raid, the Pulse Rifle which can take care of Arc Shields and obviously Unstoppables, and also a Threaded Needle to complement the Divinity as well for any of those Hive Guardians, Champions, or Bosses. Alright, so let's talk about the first proper area that we encounter. Off the bat, I like to take care of those acolytes so nothing is shooting me in the back and I like to perch myself at the top of those stairs. On the right side, immediately take down the two anti-barrier champions before they have time to unleash on you and clear up any of those adds on the left. Be careful when you kill the sword bearer though because on a previous run, he fell off the map and he took the sword with him and it took a very long time for him to hit the bottom and die, which meant it took the game a very long time to respawn a new one in, definitely not ideal for speedruns. After some light platforming, you'll come across another area which has a few red bars and an anti-barrier at the back. Once he's down, a shrieker will spawn him with some more adds and with a sword bearer that will allow you to progress further. Once you drop down, you're in a restricted respawn zone, so just make sure you're playing your lives, but luckily it isn't very difficult at all. Target the unstoppables right away and then whittle down the adds around you. Popping a bubble here is great because there's no other sections at the start of this mission that really require it urgently, so you may as well give the linear fusion rifles that your fire team have a nice little damage buff. Mop up the remaining adds and move on through. Note that the other adds are yellow bars, so don't be too confident around them because they will wreck you. Once you head inside, there'll be a lot of adds and there'll also be an anti-barrier champion. If you focus the anti-barrier champion and melt him, that'll spawn in a hive guardian hunter. If you melt the Hive Guardian, it'll despawn all the adds inside, so you kind of want a super that'll keep you alive long enough to kill the champion and then kill the guardian. We messed around with a Thunder Crash here and it worked really well and it one banged either the champion or the Hive Guardian, and if you wanted to replace it with one of the tethers, I'd definitely recommend that. Just don't forget to finish the ghost because that'll proc loose and finish it every time to stock everyone up with ammo. Not that it really matters because once you move on outside though, there'll be a nice rally flag for this next section. Here's where Wither Horde and Arbalest came in handy for controlling adds and for removing any shields at a good distance. The idea is to kill everything out here so that there isn't a single enemy popping shots at you in the distance or behind you at all. Once the first little bit is cleared, move forward to spawn the sword bearing knight and then head back to the first part. There'll be plenty more adds spawned and an anti-barrier waiting for you. Just coordinate together, team shoot the same enemies and it's actually pretty easy to do. Don't leave the sword on the ground for too long or it'll despawn, so designate one of the players in the fire team to be in charge of using the sword. Once you've now properly and officially cleared that first part, you'll be greeted by an unstoppable ogre, a wizard and a hive guardian near the middle. The Divinity and the Linear Fusion Rifles really make this part a lot easier since you can do it all at range. Once the Hive Guardian is down, one of the Hunters just needs to stealth in there and get the finisher on the Ghost if there are still other adds up and it's still dangerous. And then you can just progress on to the other side once everything is cleared. 
This side is exactly the same as the first one. Just clear everything, take down the sword-bearing knight again, clean up the champion, and make sure the area is clear so that nothing is shooting you in the back for this next section. Once this side is clear, you'll be greeted by a very tanky solar shielded witch. She is literally impossible to divinity in this particular run that we had, and she just fell off the map. <laughs> but then she reappeared again, and I, I just couldn't keep up with her. But she couldn't escape the full force of Arbalus and everything else that we had to offer, so she just let us pass through into the building. Once you enter inside, you'll be greeted with a knight and an anti-barrier off the rip. Make sure to use the ramp as cover so you can just pop your head out to kill it because its splash damage against the wall behind you is fairly lethal. There's a few champions littered throughout here, but essentially all you need to do is just follow the waypoint, clear the rooms, and keep platforming up to the next floors. Nothing about this part is difficult at all because the rooms are super small and any void explosions mixed in with Wither Horde just nukes everything. Eventually, you'll get up to the Hive Guardian boss, who's damage gated into three different sections. This is where we just focus it with Divinity and Supers, because once you hit that damage gate, she'll just retreat and all the adds would despawn. In each of these three phases, there's a sword bearer to kill and a champion to take care of. If you want to play it safe, you can always just pick off all the adds first, although it's just unnecessary. Once you get to the third and final phase of the fight, a different Hive Guardian will spawn, just make quick work of him and get him out the way, because then the actual boss will come out. If you've got a super, now's the time to finish the fight, or just go in with heavy weapons. And just like that, a nice easy 15 minute run. We did a handful of these to try and optimize it as best we could. I think we could still probably shave a couple minutes off, but 15 minutes for a good chance at an Ascendant Alloy is pretty good. Honestly, loadouts can be pretty flexible here. Damaging supers are great, Mobius Quiver tethers felt really nice, Thunder Crashes felt great, but you could substitute in a Nova Bomb or even a Chaos Reach. Since there's so many adds in each little encounter, it's truly up to you. I managed to run three back-to-back -back while recording this, and I scored three Ascendant Alloys from each of them, so either the drop rate is pretty good, or I have insanely good RNG. So get out there, get yours, but that's all from me guys, uh, if this guide helped for some quick runs on the master difficulty and helped you farm some out, please drop a like on the video, and as always, take it easy guardians.